The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. This world is a complicated world. And one of the reasons why this world is complicated is because people are complicated. People are complicated creatures. Do not be naive. It breaks my heart to see how many naive people are out there. As pastor, my job is people. I spend all day with people. People are my job. I am with people during their best of days and their worst of days. And over the years, I have come to know people. And the more I have lived, the more I have realized that people are complicated beings. Just because someone smiles at you does not mean they are for you. People can smile at your face and talk dirt about you to others. People can smile and hug you and stab you in the back. A man can say, I'm going to marry you, and he can spend 10 years dating you and break up with you and be engaged to another woman one month later. People are complicated beings, and if you think they are not, just keep living and you will come to find that people are complicated individuals. Now I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been close to someone and thought you and that person were close and will always be there for one another? until you found out they were just a Judas in the wings, and then you finally saw the real animosity and hatred they had in their hearts towards you? I know this is a hard message, but it is necessary, because the truth is, not everyone truly wants the best for you. To believe that you are being naive, like I said, we humans are complicated beings. We are not straightforward beings like dogs. With a dog, it either likes you and comes and licks you on one hand, or it doesn't like you and it barks and growls at you. If a dog likes you or doesn't like you, you will know. But humans are complicated beings. Humans are able to deceive you into thinking that you are on the same team. All the while, they are either plotting for your downfall or waiting for your downfall. A dog can't hide its real agenda. But people can. People can travel with you and completely, utterly deceive you. One thing you need to understand is that people are complex creatures. I remember one year a lady came to my wife crying that her husband wanted a divorce. What really shocked her is that two weeks before he told her he wanted a divorce, it was Valentine's Day and he had brought her flowers and taken her for a romantic weekend away. And two weeks later, he asked for a divorce. People are complex creatures. Look at Judas. Matthew chapter 26, verses 21 through 22. Now, as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? Notice how when Jesus mentioned that one of you will betray me, not even one of the disciples stood up and pointed at Judas, stating that Judas seems most likely to betray our Lord Jesus Christ. They all started questioning themselves. Is it I? Judas was hidden amongst the twelve, but he fooled all the other disciples. Nothing led the other disciples to even suspect it was Judas. I state all of this to come back to my original point. We as human beings are complicated creatures. Now one thing you need to know is that within the Bible, there are things called enemies. The Bible speaks of enemies. Time and time again, the Bible mentions enemies. And you yourself, in your life, you have enemies. There will be in life people who don't like you for no reason. And there will also be people who don't like you for a good reason. Psalm chapter 23 verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Time and time again in the Bible, we see this phrase enemies come up. The truth is, John chapter 15 verses 18 through 21, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, 
they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. Even people hated Jesus. The world hated Jesus. And there were people in Jesus' day who plotted and schemed against him. And Jesus lived a perfect life. All Jesus did was for others. There was no self-interest or self-seeking. He healed the sick. He raised the dead, made the lame walk, opened blind eyes. All that Jesus did was perfectly good and perfectly holy. Yet he still had enemies. You may not be aware of it, but there is someone out there interceding for you interceding to God for you. That person may be a parent, a family member, a spouse, a church member, or even your local pastor. These people are sent by the Lord into your life. But just as God sends people into your life, the devil also sends people into your life. There are some clear signs you can use to identify whether a person is sent by the devil or not. The kind of fruit they bear. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 through 16. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? A person filled with the Holy Spirit will show fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Is the person a kind person? If someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, they will be kind to people. And you see the kindness of someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit because it is a type of kindness that is not artificial. It is the type of kindness that draws people to them. Always watch the fruits people bear in their life. This means that we must look beyond what people tell us and watch out for what they do. What defines people best is the kind of fruit they bear. No one can falsify their identity when it comes to the bearing of fruit. Time will reveal who they really are. That is why we must watch the people we allow into our lives. Everyone can talk a good game, but very rarely can people back up their talk. This means that we must look beyond what people tell us and watch out for what they do. Are they happy for you when you succeed, or are they burning inside with envy? In your time of need, are they there for you, or are they nowhere to be found? The truth is, in every relationship, one person is always influencing the other person. That is the truth. A person is either drawing you closer to God or further away from God. Allow me to speak from my own personal experience. When I got saved, None of my friends were happy for me. They all looked at me as if I was strange. They all attempted to discourage me in the things of the Lord. And I had to let go of those friendships. They were friendships that wanted me to live a life that is contrary to the Word of God. I had to let go of those friendships. And even now, someone listening to me has a relationship or a friendship they know they need to let go of. What they encourage you to do. Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. Whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Someone who is not following God will hardly teach you to follow Him. They will mostly encourage you to do the same thing they are doing. So, you can discern whether someone speaking to you is sent by God or not through the kinds of things such a person encourages you to do. Anyone that consistently tells you to do anything against the character of God is not sent by God. The key word is consistently. I am not saying that you should dismiss someone after one instance. I am referring to a person who constantly encourages you to do evil. Someone who constantly encourages you to go against the word of God. There is no way someone sent by God into your life will ask you to do evil. There is no way that God, who hates evil, will ask you to do evil, no matter how small the evil is. These people will always want you to do any kind of evil. They encourage you to steal. They encourage you to sleep with different people. They encourage you to fornicate and commit adultery. They encourage you to do drugs. They encourage you to gossip. They corrupt you in every possible way. These people are manipulative. If there is anyone who is telling you bad things about Christianity, about Jesus and God, you need to run away from them. 
When they badmouth your religion, when they say sweet words to move you away from God, you should know that you need to run. If you have warned them or you have told them to stop and they refuse, you must run. What these people are doing is that they are planting a seed in you, the seed of doubt. When the seed starts to grow, it brings the fruit of unbelief in you. This is when you start doubting God. You will start to look for alternatives outside of Christ. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.